morning sacred exchange and happy Mother's Day to all the moms, the grandmoms, and spiritual moms out there. Uh, we love you guys and we want to celebrate you today. We miss you all. Um, Ellie and I are excited for today. This is our first Mother's Day. Mother's Day. And look at Ellie, here she is. She's getting big <laughs> in her little cute tutu. So she can't wait to meet everyone, her whole church family. So we're so excited. We have um, a very special service plan for you today. So I hope you guys all enjoy it. Um, but just a few announcements before we get started. Don't forget to please stay faithful in your tithes. Um, go to sacredexchange.com and you can um, go to our e-giving page and e give your tithes through PayPal or Venmo. Or you can also send in a check through our P.O. box. Um, also, we have our virtual CareNet baby bottle campaign uh, running now. Um, you can get to that campaign webpage through our Facebook page or our website. The link is posted on both those pages. So please, if you're able to give to CareNet, um, please do so if you can. Um, it's such a great cause and it's such a... Um, a wonderful thing that they do for moms and expecting moms. Um, and also, don't forget Pastor Missy and Pastor Adrian's Kids Spotlight tonight at 5 p.m. Um, parents and kids, don't forget to tune in to that tonight. Hey, how we doing? Uh, hey, Pastor West here. I just wanted to come in and just um, say, hey, let's celebrate today uh, is Marissa's first Mother's Day. Can we celebrate all the moms who have a first Mother's Day uh, today? And I just wanted to celebrate Marissa. She's done such a great job with Ellie. And, you know, it just goes to show that great people, good people, she's a great person, become great parents, become great mothers. And uh, she's a, a great mom. And I just want to say what a great job you're doing on your first Mother's Day. So that's awesome. And I just want to celebrate you. You've been a great mom and a great wife. So can we celebrate Marissa? Church, can you write down in the box, happy first Mother's Day to Marissa? And, uh, and uh, we have uh, a Lisa coming up with, uh, Lisa coming up with a uh, testimony. But before we do that, let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we thank you for all the mothers out there, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the spiritual moms, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you provide us with good mothers, Lord. That we wouldn't be the people we are today without our mothers. Lord, Lord even when we, when we uh, Lord, don't have the mothers in our lives, Lord, that you provide us with spiritual moms, Lord, who come in and take that role, Lord, and Lord, provide and, and show compassion and love for us, Lord. So we thank you that you're always looking out after us. You're always providing for us, Lord, and you're always there for us. So Lord, this day, as we uh, celebrate mothers, Lord, we, uh, we lift them up in prayer and we thank you for them, Lord. And uh, Lord, we just honor you and praise you. Have your way here in this service, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, check this uh, testimony out by Lisa. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Bless you, we love you, and we miss you. Church, happy Mother's Day, ladies. I hope that you are all being still under the shadow of the Almighty, knowing that He who watches over us never sleeps. Nothing or no one can snatch us out of God's hands. His promises are true and he will complete them all in our lives. I thank God for this time to share with you his goodness in my life. I pray that this testimony encourages you. In 2015, after six years of marriage, my husband and I decided to have our first child. It took a year and a half to get pregnant. It was a dream come true, but it was hard to get pregnant. A week later, I was bleeding with severe stomach pain. We rushed to the ER and then we found out what we didn't want to hear. I had a miscarriage. I cried so much. The DNC process was so painful. I spent one night at the hospital. I felt all alone. Then I asked God, where are you? 
I am your servant. I am suffering here. The next day, when I got back home, I did not speak to God anymore because I was upset with him for letting me go through that horrible situation. Mind you, before that, I used to praise and pray three times almost daily. But I didn't talk to God at that time. I spent a week in bed crying. I did not eat much. The following Sunday, when I went to church, the Lord met me there and spoke to me through songs and the message that was preached that day. He reminded me that he never left me and he will never leave me. He is very close to my broken heart. That day, I wept some more. I went home with a new attitude and I started to speak to God again. I asked him to make me whole again, to heal my broken heart, and most importantly, to not let me go through that horrible situation. I prayed every day and my God in his compassion has heard my prayers. Not long after that, the Lord made a way for me and my husband to move here to Wood Island for school. It was an answered prayer. I still couldn't conceive. I had irregular long periods. The Lord led me to a doctor here who discovered that I had ovarian polyps, yes. More than three doctors told me that I would need surgery for the polyps to be removed. I asked them if there was if that was the only option, they said yes. I told God I did not want to have surgery because I believed that he could heal me. I got a new sense of hope that the Lord would move mightily in my favor. I went out and bought two onesies, <laughs> one girl and one boy. I prayed on them daily. Then the Lord sent someone who did not know my condition. She did not know what I was going through. And she told me that, Lisa, you need to stop eating meat and dairy. I did not want to hear that because I thought it was impossible to do. Then the Lord used another approach to get my attention. I was in the library and I saw a book. The name was What? the health i've heard about it before i wanted to read that book the holy spirit urged me to borrow the book and i did i read it in one week the book explained everything that i needed to know for me to get well therefore i obeyed and stopped eating meat and dairy i exercised regularly and ate plant-based organic foods. It seemed like things got worse, long, heavier period with clots. That went on for about six months. I did not like it. It annoyed me, <laughs> but I kept the faith. I believe that the Lord was cleansing me. He was making me whole again. I was hopeful that joy was coming in the morning after all of my weeping. That same faith urged me to go to the women retreat that we had in 2018. It was six months after I received the news from the doctors that I needed surgery. At that point, I was so exhausted and tired physically. When I got to the hotel for our retreat, I had to run to the restaurant to change pants. There I prayed, Father, please help me. He did. <laughs> the first evening we had service, the presence of the Lord was so strong in the midst of us. I knelt down at a corner and stayed still in the presence of the Lord. I cried so much because he filled me up. Everything that was said that day 
that night revealed that I was not going to leave the retreat the same way that I came. I believed it. When I went back to the hotel room to change for bed, there was no sign of my irregular bleeding. I smiled and whispered, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the next day, the Lord continued to move powerfully in the midst of us. The guest speaker had a word for each table. For my table, she said, the Lord sees what you are going through. He will heal your broken heart and he will make you happy again. I received it and wrote it in my notebook. I was filled with the Holy Spirit for the entire retreat. The last day of the retreat after our morning service, one of the sisters came to me and said, I know I don't know you that well, but I keep seeing a baby every time I look at you. At that point, I was shivering in the inside. Then I told her briefly what I've been dealing with. From the time I stepped foot at the hotel for our retreat, the bleeding stopped. I went back home and there was still no bleeding issue. A week, two weeks had passed. Still, there was no sign of bleeding. I was not worried because I know what happened at the retreat was real. <laughs> I started to have some pain. That was when I decided to take a pregnancy test. The retreat was on March 23rd. It so happened that I took the pregnancy test on April 23rd, exactly a month after. To God be the glory, the test came out positive. When I went back to the hospital, they tested. and They couldn't see what I needed uh, surgery for. Instead, they saw a baby was growing. Today, we have our 16-month-old healthy baby, a gift from God. <laughs> with man, it seemed impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. During my pain, I asked God, where are you? God was right there with me, but at that time, I couldn't see him. I know he, wa he was with me because his word says, he will never leave me, nor forsake me. I expected that God would keep me away from pain, but soon I realized that as a follower of Christ, the Lord will allow me to go through pain. For one thing, to help me grow spiritually. As Christians, we have to be transformed. And one way that can be done is by going through some trials and tribulations. And um, for me, I learned after, after all the pains, I learned how to, um, how to be more patient, how to trust God more. And uh, most importantly, I find myself now spending more time with God because I cannot live without him. <laughs> oh, for another reason, the Lord would allow us to go through pain is for us to be able to confront others so we can tell them that there is hope in Jesus Christ when they are going through something. And without my pain, I wouldn't be able to speak to you today about his faithfulness in my life. All of this is to say that do not waste your pain. It's temporary. Keep praying, keep praising, and most importantly, Keep trusting God. He will help you until we see each other again. I love you. Peace be with you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, ladies of Sacred Exchange. This is kind of a different year, isn't it, for us? I just want to encourage you today that um, here I am in my kitchen. And as women, as moms, we spend a lot of time in our kitchens, don't we? cooking, preparing, hoping that the atmosphere of our home is going to be special as we sit around the dinner table and enjoy one another's company. Your children see how you are imparting things into their lives. They see the things that you do. I want you to be encouraged today, whether they're thanking you or not, whether your heart is heavy today on this particular Mother's Day. I've had many. 
myself where it didn't feel like a happy Mother's Day. But I want you to know the joy is coming in the morning if you're not in a happy place today. The Lord is with you. He validates who you are as a mom. If you're hurting today, missing your children, um, he wants to bring you comfort and strength. We want you to feel the blessing of God and the favor of God today on this Mother's Day as we spend some time together over the next few minutes. I want to read a scripture to you. It's from Psalm 90, which I shared the other night. It's in the Passion Translation, and I love it. It says, let the sunrise of your love end our dark night. Break through our clouded dawn again. Only you can satisfy our hearts, filling us with songs of joy to the end of our days. We've been overwhelmed with grief. Many of us have had seasons where we're overwhelmed with grief. Overwhelm us now with your gladness. Replace our years of trouble with decades of delight. Listen to that. God's a God who multiplies. Let us see your miracles again. And let the rising generation, let our children, let the next generation see the glorious wonders that you are famous for. Well, Lord our God, let your sweet beauty rest upon us and give us favor. And so that's our prayer for you today, women of sacred exchange, that the beauty and the favor of God would rest upon your life, that you know that you're doing a good work for the Lord. If you've made some mistakes, we all have. They're under the blood. Move on. Tomorrow's a new day. Just be blessed, okay? Um, we have some fun little clips of um, some blessings for moms. So go ahead and enjoy those. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to pray for us women before we enter into worship. Love you all. I love her about my mom because she cooks because she cooks and she's the best mom in the world. Name's Adrian. My name is Liliana and I love about my mom that she cooks breakfast for us and she takes care of us all day and never stops working. And I'm grateful for my mom that she loves us so much. That's all. My God. So can you tell me some things that you love about mom? Um, I love her. You love her? What else? What are some things that you love to do with mom? Um, You like to ride your bike with mom? Yeah. Yeah? Anything else? No. That's it? You love mom and you like to ride your bikes with her? Yeah. Perfect. Hey church family. Hope you're all doing well. Um, we love you guys. We miss you so bad. Can't wait to see you in person. Um, I want to reach out and say happy Mother's Day to everyone. Um, especially my wife Lori. Uh, she is the best mom I know. She is so patient and loving, and she has the love of Christ. It's unconditional. We have been through thick and thin together, and uh, because of Jesus <laughs> bringing us together, um, we made it. We made it through. I consider myself very blessed and a rich man, and she is truly my better half. There's no words to describe how much I love her. And she is a phenomenal mom. She is a heart of gold. She nurtures, she, she loves unconditionally. And uh, I wish her a very, very special day. Uh, we're gonna be at home, I'm gonna cook. I hope it comes out good, but uh, we're gonna be together. And uh, I hope all the moms out there have a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, like I said, we miss you guys so bad and uh, can't wait to see you. And, it's, it's, it'll be great when we see each other. It makes you appreciate one another. Absence does make the heart grow fonder. And uh, thank you, Lori. I love you. Love you, baby. You're the best mom I know. Right, tell thank me, you. what are some things that you love about your mom? Edgy day, Jeremy. Plays with me. Awesome. 
Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. What I like about my mommy is that she plays with me and my sister. One thing I like about my mom is that she gives us lots of hugs and she comforts us. This is what I like about my mom. She's thoughtful and she's really, um, and she's really, uh, like, cute <laughs> and, um, caring and she loves um, when everybody is in a group together and like holidays we have feasts and we we're just happy all together and I love her a lot and she she's really important to me and she has really good thoughts about how to take care of us. Um, happy Mother's Day and love you mom. Bye Jane. So much. Oh, because of her heart? Because her heart? Love you and we hope you have a great day. We love you. I'm thankful for mommy because she takes good care of me and, and takes care of all of us and and she buys me nice clothes and, and fun toys. Mommy, best to toy ever. And mommy, dado, the red. <laughs> Wasn't that so sweet? Awesome. Okay, I wanna pray with you ladies today. Would you put your hand over your heart as we pray? Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your love that's poured out, shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. Lord, we need that love. We need that assurance. We need that knowing that you approve of us even when we fall short because we do. We thank you for the cleansing and the covering of your blood in those days when we feel overwhelmed. I pray for every mom, for every woman within the sound of my voice this morning, that they would know that they are precious to you, that you see them, you see their hurts, you see their heartaches, you see their joys. Lord, I pray that this Mother's Day would be a day of celebration if the hearts are heavy, that you would lift them up. Let them know that you are rejoicing over them with singing, that you love them, and that you have awesome plans for them and their families. Oh, we commit every care to you, every broken heart, every wounded spirit, that as we spend this time together worshiping you, Lord, and in your word, that the women's hearts would be turned towards you, the hearts would be lightened, Lord, bless them today on this day when we honor mothers. Let them feel honored. Shower them with your blessing and your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Enjoy worship and the word, and we hope to see you real soon. Love you, ladies. Sacred Exchange, it's so good to be with you again. Uh, we are counting down the days till we get to be with you. Um, also, happy Mother's Day. I just want to say thank you to all the moms out there. Uh, we hope you feel blessed. We hope you feel treasured. We hope that you feel honored today. Um, know that we appreciate all that you do, all the ways that you, um, that you do things behind the scenes that we don't even see. Uh, know that it's appreciated. We love you. 
and we're thankful for you. Where would we be without moms? So this morning, join us as we worship, enter in with us, turn up the volume, turn out the distractions, get rid of those things, and let's worship. Let's go into the presence of God this morning. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your love. We are here for you. We are here for you.
bless the name Jesus So blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Yes
the Savior of the world.
Good morning, Sacred Exchange Fellowship. Happy Mother's Day. So good to be with you this day. God is great, and this is a great day. Mother's Day is a special, special day. It's one of the big days on the church calendar. Uh, it's always been a big day for me since I was a little kid. We would go down to Austin's Planorama in Johnston. They had a greenhouse about the size of our sanctuary. No, bigger. It was twice the size of our sanctuary. And we'd go there and we'd get to play in lemon trees and it was like a forest. And, uh, and, and get a special plant and bring it to my dad's mother. It was always a special time. And Mother's Day is still a special time. Uh, famous, famous preacher. G. Campbell Morgan, he had four sons, they were all preachers. They had a family reunion one time and someone asked one of the boys, so who's the best preacher in the Morgan household? And the boy looked right at his father and then he said, mom. And uh, moms are special. Moms have a way that goes beyond just words and their actions speak so loud. And uh, so we want to talk about mothers this morning with you. Um, it's so good seeing everyone on the, on the videos and seeing the faces. I'll, I'll tell you, we had the, uh, the practice, the rehearsal, and then the, the, uh, the worship set that we recorded. And uh, a new face that I hadn't seen in a little while, uh, Guido came in. I saw him come in the door, and, 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 and I see the other guys like once a week, and, and I love doing that. But when I saw him, my heart just jumped. I felt like Felix the Cat. My heart went fiddle fat. And it's like, wow, if, if I feel this way because I see a brother I haven't seen in a little while, uh, imagine how it's going to be. Imagine how it's going to be when we all come together. I don't know if we fully understand the extent of the emotion, uh, but it's going to be a marvelous, marvelous time. And you know something? It won't be long. It won't be long. Anyway. Mother's Day is always a high, high church attendance day. It's one of the highest church attendance days there is, along with Easter and Christmas. And uh, So maybe you are tuning in today because Mom asked you to, or you're with Mom tuning in. And so I, I really want to share a word uh, with you out of the Word of God. I pray, Father, bless your Word this morning. Bless every bit of it that goes out, Lord. Let it not land on the waters uh, in, in vain, but let it come back. Full. Hallelujah. Uh, let's read our word of God. I will be speaking in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Our title of our sermon is What Shall Come of This? What's going to come of this? And uh, I know a lot of you are thinking, what is going to come of this? Mothers, you are looking at your children. And you're saying, what's going to come of this? Uh, sometimes that question is very hard to answer in the beginning because we really don't know. We just do our part and God does the rest. And so uh, it starts off, the chapter starts off in verse 1, says, cast your bread on the waters and you will find it after many days. But I want to look at verse 4, 5, and 6, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4, 5, and 6. He that observes the wind shall not sow, and he that regards the clouds will not reap. As you know what's in the way of the spirit, uh, nor how the bones grow in the womb of her that's with child, even so you know not the works of God who makes all. In the morning sow your seed, in the evening withhold not your hand, for thou knowest not whether you shall prosper or whether they shall not uh, but whether they shall, whether they shall prosper either this or that, or whether they shall both be good alike. You don't know the end of your sowing. You don't know what's going to happen in the end. He says, if you look for reasons to not sow, if you look for reasons to not do, if you observe the wind, you'll never sow. If you observe the, the clouds, you'll never sow. It's going to rain, I'm not going out today. It's too windy, my seed will get blown around, I'm not going out today. If you look for a reason to not sow, you will find it every single day. You don't know, he says, the mysteries. We don't understand the great mysteries of the things of God. He talks about a woman with a child and the bones forming inside of her, and it's a mystery. We don't understand how it happens. 
Today we have ultrasounds. We have things we can look and see stuff going on. But you don't understand the full extent of what's happening there. It's life. No one really understands it fully. And that's what God is saying to us. You don't know in the beginning what the end is going to look like. God does. You don't know the seed. You don't know the preciousness. You don't know the specialness. You don't know, uh, you know, just what you have there. How important is a mother? It's, it's so important. Listen, everybody that has a child is not a mother. Every woman that has a child is not a mother. I've known a lot of women through the years where they say, I love, I love my child, I love my child, I live for my child, yet they bring some guy in the house that's abusive to the child. What they love is the relationship more than their children. There are women who love a needle or a bottle more than their children. There are women who, who, who just have to have something more than their child. That's not a mother. I'm talking about the kind of mothers that I see in this church. I'm talking about the kind of women that, that lay it all down for their children, that, that, that go out and do the right thing for their kids, that, that put the kids first, and that are always, I see the videos, I see, the, I see the, them with their children, I see what they invest in their children. That's a mother. Mothers are women that are not just progenitors but women that love their children and nurture and raise and bring them up. And motherhood is to be respected and honored and revered because a real mother, someone that loves their child, not just in words, but in action and deeds, needs to be lifted up. So he's saying here, you don't know what the end is going to bring. But in verse 6, he says, in the morning, go sow your seed. And in the evening, withhold not your hand. For you don't know what will prosper, this or that. Just go and sow. You don't know, but go and sow. In the morning, sow. In the evening, sow. You never know the greatness in that seed. When you buy seed, whether it's grass seed, whatever seed you buy, you, you always look, it always talks about the purity. Well, we better run. You know how it is. Children go where children go. You can't always control them. God was the perfect parent. Look what happened with Adam and Eve. You know? But what he's saying is, you never know the greatness that's there. There's greatness in our children that's there. And I want to encourage us today to bring it out, to pull it out, to be mothers indeed. Mothers that look and while they don't understand, we don't understand the fullness of it. It's a mystery. What is in that child is a mystery to us. Yet, by faith, we pour into these children. We, we bless them. We raise them. We bring them up. We instruct them. And we look to God because he made them. They're his. And in them is greatness. And we look to train them and raise them to bring it out that in the right time and harvest time, God can reap a bountiful harvest in our children. And the greatness that we have helped as, as co-laborers to bring out of these children um, is going to be just amazing. It's, it's absolutely just amazing. You never know the greatness in the seed we just planted. He's just saying, go out in the morning and plant. Go out in the evening and plant. Don't look at the weather. Don't look for excuses to not do it. Don't say the school system is going to do it, or the Sunday school is going to do it, or the children's church is going to do it, or the, 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 the little videos are going to do it, or the telephone is going to do it, or the, you know, give the child a, 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 a tablet or something to play. Don't ever expect that someone is going to do the job that we are commissioned to do. Let me give you an example of this. A great example in the Word of God is Timothy. Timothy was a special, special uh, person. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul would say, he's sending Timothy, and he says, I am sending Timothy because I have nobody like this guy. There's nobody I have like him. No one is going to look out for your, for your good like Timothy is going to look out for your good. Timothy is a son in the faith. He is, he is a faithful man. He's brought up. He was the pastor 
in 2 Timothy. Uh, it's a pastoral epistle. And Timothy became the pastor of the church at Ephesus. Let me tell you about Ephesus. It was the second greatest city in the Roman Empire. This was not a, a little two-goat town. This was a great metropolis. They had a giant coliseum. It was, a, it was an incredibly great city. Paul spent a lot of time there, established a church there. He spent a couple of years there building it and growing it. And later when it was time, he sent Timothy there as the young pastor. Because again, no one uh, would be as diligent and faithful as Timothy would be. He was special. And so Paul sent him there. He's mentioned all through the book of Acts uh, as being with Paul in his missionary journeys. He's a special guy. Where did that specialness come from? It gives us the second Timothy, Paul tells us. He says in chapter 1 and verse uh, 6, and, uh, 5 rather, When I call to remembrance the unframed fate that is in thee, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, and then later in your mother Eunice, I am persuaded in thee also. And I want to put you in remembrance to stir up that which is in you because of that. Listen, your grandmother Lois had faith. Your mother Eunice had faith. These were Jewish women. And you might say, where's dad? These were Jewish women. And they raised Timothy. I don't know where dad was. Dad was a Greek. It tells us that uh, a little later on. In Acts chapter 16, it tells us that, that his dad was a Greek. And that's why Paul would take him and have him circumcised. But his grandmother uh, Lois and his mother Eunice were Jewish women. And they took him and they taught him and they raised him and they poured into him. They taught him the word of God. And so the Old Testament scriptures, he was, he was acquainted with them. He was familiar with it. They raised him up. And Paul could say, I, I'll put you in remembrance to stir up that gift. Because I'll call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you. That unfeigned, that means sincere faith, not hypocritical faith, real faith. Faith you can count on, faith you can stand on. This faith is in you, it has been planted in you. It was sown and planted in your life as a small child. You were raised up with a godly mother and a godly grandmother that had an impact in your life that made you special, that made you who you are. And, I, and it's part of why you are so special. It's part of why you are such a, a, a man of integrity, such a, a man that I can count on, someone that I have no one else like you. It didn't just happen. It didn't just happen. You didn't just get saved and that happened. You, it was planted in you. There was a, something of greatness in you and they worked it. I don't know what these women thought that this young boy would become. I don't know if their intent was he'll be a doctor someday. He'll be a, a, a great orator someday. He'll be a, a, a Roman senator someday. I don't know their intentions for him. But he surpassed them, no doubt, all by becoming the great man of God that he ended up being. He surpassed all of those things. We don't know in the day of sowing the greatness of the harvest. We never get to see that. It's like the bones forming in the womb of that small child. It's a mystery to us. We don't totally understand. What God is telling us in Ecclesiastes and here with Timothy is just don't make excuses for why you can't do it. Go out and sow and pour in. Because there's greatness in our children. There's greatness in them. And it's our job to polish it and to bring it out and to nurture it and to care for it. Sincere faith. Sincere faith. What does it take to raise up a Timothy? That's my question. What does it take to raise up a Timothy? How much time? How much Labor, how much work, how much effort, how much pouring in does it take? I want to go over four quick things um, that it takes to raise up a Timothy. And that we can say in the end, what shall come of this thing? First off, the first thing is it has to be planted. You have to get out and sow. 
We have to make up a mind. And when I say plant it, I mean just come to a decision. I am going to step up to the plate. I am going to grab the reins. I am going to take responsibility for this child that God has given me. This child is a miracle. God has given me this miracle. He's entrusted me with this child. Uh, I, I'm a steward of this child. And he's looking to me to raise this child in the way it should go. So when it's old, it will not depart from it. And so the first thing we do is we take our responsibility and, 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 and grab a hold of that. I look at some of the mothers that we have here, and I'm, I'm amazed. I'm frankly, I'm amazed. Some of them are even single mothers. And the, the job they do raising their children, the love that they have, the instruction that's obvious, the, the manners, the, the well-behaved children, it's a testament, testimony to who their mothers are and to, the, and to the effort and care that they put into them. I can't say enough about it. We have tremendous mothers here. We have not one mother that I don't think is absolutely phenomenal. And I look for these things. I watch these things. I love seeing this. And um, so I want to, I want to just, just, again, happy Mother's Day and, and, and praise the mothers that we have. But if I can help and say, the first thing we have to do is we have to understand that we have an, a, a, an obligation, a sacred duty, to raise our children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. To raise miracle children that God has given us. And raise them just like that. Just like miracle children. Samson, a miracle child. Samuel, a miracle child. John the Baptist, a miracle child. The Bible is full of miracle children. Isaac, a miracle child. <laughs> All of them, miracle child. Your child is a miracle child. There's greatness in that child. It's not just, just raising this kid and doing the best you can to, you know, keep them out of trouble and keep them fed and, and keep your sanity, which sometimes it seems that way. I know. Um, but you know something? There's a miracle in that child. There's greatness in that child. God put it there. Because that child, though you say you're the mom, or you're the dad, too, it's really God's child. God has loaned that child to you. God has entrusted you to raise that child in the fear and admonition of the Lord, and to live in such a way that the natural outcome of your life is for that child to come and to worship and to love God. That's, so the first thing we do is, is we plant. We plant. Don't look for excuses not to step up and plant seeds into that child. God's given you that child to, for, the, for that purpose. The next thing you do is you water. You invest time. We invest love. We invest, I, I look at some of the mothers here, that the, the time they put in, uh, in running around and doing different things with their children, pouring in. I, I, I've known mothers that had no time for their kids. I'm so glad we have mothers that are, are terrific and wonderful mothers that have great, great time for their children. This, it was said of Timothy that you have a sincere faith. That word sincere is, is important. It means without any hypocrisy. It means faith that is, that is really true and grounded in pure faith. Faith that comes not by just, uh, you know, putting it on. It's not like putting on a, a, a suit to come to church. It's not something that is, is faith when you're around the right crowd, but not when you're around. It's something that happens in you. And the mothers instill that because that happens at a tr very, very, very young age. That kind of faith. You know, sometimes I would rather have little, little children pray for me than older people. And I know older people can pray well, and they know what to say. They know how to pray, you know. Um, they can pray an effectual prayer, and they can pray even a fervent prayer. But sometimes the faith of a little child that totally believes that I can talk to God and God is going to hear me and God is going to do this. That faith, that faith, that sincere 
faith is so amazing and powerful and strong. And Jesus said, you know, accept your faith. It's like that of a little child. You're not entering in. Not put on faith. Not the way we learn to carry on in church. We, we learn a church way. And, and it gets us by. And sometimes it gets us by when it shouldn't. But little children have a sincerity of faith. And they get that because we put it in them. We water it into them. It's something that is not taught. I don't know that it can be taught. It's taught because it's caught. It's something that you behave and they watch you and they see you. They see the way you act when, when something happens and somebody does something and takes the last shopping cart or, or takes the last box of Cheerios. Or, we don't eat Cheerios. It's Cheerios. Frosted Flakes or Alphabet. You know, takes the last box of Fruit Loops out of the aisle and there's no Fruit Loops left. And it's like, I want my Fruit Loops. I want Cocoa Puffs. I don't know why Cheerios ever even came out of my mouth. But, you know, and they take the last box and your child watches you. They're watching and they're seeing how you react. And when they see us react the right way, we are teaching them sincere faith. We're teaching them. They hear us on the way to church talking about this one and that one, and then they see you all nice and shaking hands. They see you arguing and fighting in the home, and the telephone rings, and you go from ah to hello. Oh, God bless. Oh, how, hallelujah, hallelujah. They see that. And, you know, it's probably good to put on a hallelujah, hallelujah sometimes, because, you know, we have little quarrels and arguments and stuff. But to not blow off and go crazy in an argument and a rage and then put on happy face all of a sudden. Come on. They see all that stuff. And when they see that, you're not there. That you have a sincere faith, that it's real. They catch sincere faith. And Timothy caught sincere faith both from Lois's grandmother and Eunice's mother, and he was able to carry that into his relationship with Paul the Apostle. He was able to carry that on the missionary journeys. He was able to carry that into a pastorate at uh, the Ephesus church, the second largest church in the, uh, the second largest city in the empire, a great church. He was able to do that. It was something that was planted and instilled into him as a very young boy. We water. We invest time, we invest love, we invest uh, actions that are right, and we plant a sincere faith in our child. The next thing we do is we weed. I don't plant gardens anymore because I hate weeding, frankly. It's the hardest thing to do. Digging up a whole field, turning over the soil, uh, fertilizing it, and, and all that I, I can do. That's part of it. I've done that. But the idea of getting down, bending over, and pulling out weeds all the time, incessantly, constantly, every week you've got to weed your garden. The weeds will totally overtake the best seed, the best plant, the healthiest, beautiful plant. Weeds will overtake it. That's the nature of the world. That's how it is. And weeding is part of raising a child. You can't expect that the school system is going to raise that child to have sincere faith. They're going to be taught things that have to be removed from them. They're going to be taught to worship the creation more than the creator, which is what they were in the Roman Empire. They worship the creation more than the creator. Sounds familiar uh, with some of the stuff that goes on in school today. They, they'll tell you all about well, they can't tell you about mathematics and, and literature and critical thinking and how to reason, but they can certainly tell you about rainforest depletion and ozone layers and whales and, and, and how to hug trees. Probably shouldn't say that. I love trees. I love climbing them. I love eating fruit off them. But the fact is, um, I, I worship the creator, not the creation. We live in a time where... People worship the creation. And so this stuff is taught. It's almost indoctrinated. You have to do some weeding. We have to pull things out of our children. Children will have bad associations. I remember my mother telling me um, I, I wanted a leather jacket. I, I wanted a leather jacket, the kind of leather jacket they used to wear back in the day. 
where all the hoodlums would wear leather jackets, you know? And so I wanted to look like all the hoodlums, because uh, to me, I didn't know better. I thought hoodlums were cool, so I wanted a leather jacket too. My mother told me, you're not having a leather jacket. She says, my money, I want to buy my own leather jacket. I work. You're not having a leather jacket. You dress like a hoodlum, you act like a hoodlum. She was right. <laughs> Eventually got the jacket. And, and she was right. You know, there's weeding that has to be done. There's, there's pulling things out that the world just so, you don't so have to sow weeds in your garden. They'll get sown there for you. They'll blow in from somewhere else. And the same with children, worldliness, bad associations, a diet of untruth. Um, these things just come into our children. We have to constantly weed stuff out. Find out what did you hear, what did you learn, what are you studying, who are you hanging around with, what are they telling you, what did you learn over at that house when you went over there from them, what are those associations doing with you. There are people that, that I don't know, my dad's saying, don't hang with this kid, you can't hang with them. I used to try to hang with them all the time, you know why? Because I would come back and, and two things would happen. I would come back and my ribs would hurt from laughing, so hard laughing, the stuff that this guy used to do, laughing. Half the time laughing, the other half the time getting in trouble. And, and that's how it is. Bad associations, weeding. We have to weed with our children. We plant and accept our responsibility uh, as, as parents that God has given us. We water, we invest time, we invest love, we, we train them, we show them, we model them. We, we blaze the trail for them to follow, we show them what it's about with actions. We weed this bad stuff that keeps getting into them. We're constantly weeding and pulling just like a garden. Just like a garden. And lastly, we nourish, we, we fertilize, we take care of it, we pour in the Word of God. Talking about Timothy, can I, can I just turn the page of chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and read verse 14, 15, and 16? And Paul tells Timothy, he says, look, continue in the things which you have, have learned and have been assured of, knowing of whom you have learned them. Who did he learn? What things? He learned from his mother and his grandmother things that Paul is telling him to be assured and to rest in them. Continue in those things which you've learned and been assured of and knowing whom you learned them from and that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. From a child you have known these things. Pay attention to them. Look to the things you learn. Because Lois and Eunice, your mother, poured into you. And though you had a Gentile father, a Greek father, yet these women poured the Old Testament into you. They poured scripture into you. They put it in you. And Paul is saying, go back to that. Rest on that. You can have assurance in that. Those are the things you've learned. Be assured in them. Know what you have learned and who you've learned them from. From a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures. They're able to make you wise to salvation through the faith that's in Christ Jesus. For what? Do we quote this all the time? For all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for, peru for reproof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness. That the man of God uh, may be thoroughly furnished and instruction in all, in all good things. The Word of God is good. Where did it come from? It came in from the home. They're not getting it. If, if Pastor Missy does such a wonderful job, I love working with Pastor Missy. I love his optimism. I love his love for the children. I've never seen a guy who loves working with the children more than this. I, 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 I worked in children's church for years and years, taught children Sunday school for years and years. Love doing it. Always love doing it. I look at him and it's like, this guy, he loves it even more than I do. It's amazing. But don't think that the one or twice a week that they're exposed to this man of God uh, and, and his wife, Pastor Adrian, and all the wonderful workers here that work with our children, don't think that a couple times a week uh, is going to fulfill 
what is needed in them and, and pour into them what is needed. It's a daily thing. You eat every day. You drink every day. Pour into these children every day. Nourish them. Pour in the word like his mother and grandmother poured into Timothy. Show an example. Be an example of a believer, of godliness, of what a woman of God is like. Be a mother. Not just a, a woman who had a child. Be a mother. Step up to that high calling. What shall come of this? We don't know. But there's greatness in these children. There's greatness in them. It's put in them by God. And it's our job to bring it out, to polish it, to refine it, to be an example before it, to nourish it, to pull out the bad, to put in the good, and to raise them before God that God can use them and that greatness can be manifest all over the place. Training in Scripture. Hallelujah. We have great mothers here. We have great, great mothers here. And, um, and we have different ages of mothers. Because Paul would also say, you know what? You that are old ones, take the younger ones under your wing. Show them the way, instruct them, give them advice, give them help. Um, teach them, teach them how to be good mothers. And, 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 and this is an incredible, um, not just opportunity, because it is opportunity, but it's responsibility, because being a mom is such an incredible responsibility and such an incredible blessing, because when it's all said and done, there's, there's no impact in a life. You can have great teachers, you can have great professors, you can have great uh, ministers, you can have you know great people in your life, but there's no one that has an impact on you like your mom. There's no one. So moms, I encourage you, be that to your children. Be that. Take the responsibility of planting. Take the responsibility of sowing into their lives. You, 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 you may not understand where it's going, you don't understand where it's going. But I'm telling you this, there's greatness in your children. There's greatness in the children here in this church. There's greatness in all children. And it's just waiting to be extracted, waiting to be pulled out. Uh, water them daily. Show them love. Don't tell them you love them. Show them you love them. Talk is cheap. Actions go deep. You know, weed out all the bad. It's hard. We live in an age where there's so much, there's so much that has to be, you know, pulled out. But make the effort. It's worth it. There's greatness in your children. God has given them to you because you are the one to perfect that child. He gave you the child that you have. He gave you the children that you have because he knew that you are just the right mom to take care of those children. And some of you have children that are not even your biological children. And you are just as much a mom because you are the one who's taken the responsibility of planting. You are the one who's taken the responsibility of, of nurturing and watering and loving and pouring into. You're the one who has taken the responsibility of plucking out and getting down on your knees and, and pulling out those weeds of all the noxious stuff that gets into their lives. And you're the one who does that. And you're the one who shares the word and instills the word in them. And you are a mother because that's what a mother does. That's what a mother does. So I want to say Happy Mother's Day to you all. We love you. We appreciate you. We raise you up, we elevate you, we celebrate you, because nobody can do what you can do. You are made and created specially for the children that God has given to you. The children that God put in your life, He matched them up with you. You are just the right mom for them. Take up that challenge. Take up that challenge. Who will plow this field? Who will sow this seed? I know there's clouds in the sky. I know it looks like rain. I know it's windy. I know there's a million other excuses to not go out and take up the challenge that God has given us. I know it's a mystery. I know we don't see the end. We have, we have no idea what the end is going to be. But you know something? He says, go out in the morning and sow. Go back in the evening and sow. Keep planting because there's greatness in those children. There are, there's greatness in our children. And if I want to see anything, anything, 
It's for our children to grow up, for us to raise up uh, the children that God has entrusted to us and to raise them up before him, that he can use them in the greatest, greatest, and mightiest way. Anyway, let me pray with you. Father, I pray that you, you take us, take our moms, take each of us. And Lord, you've entrusted us with these wonderful children. Sometimes, Lord, we don't see the wonder, but you do. You made them wonderful, and they are wonderful. And I pray you give us eyes that have just a glimpse of that wonderful that you put in them, of that special that you put in them, of that greatness that you put in them. Cause us to understand the awesome responsibility that you have entrusted us with. And cause us to understand that, God, you have actually matched us up with the children that are in our care. It's just not a happenstance. It's just not an accident. It didn't happen. You matched us up with these children. They are paired with us. They are, they are cautiously and carefully selected to be the perfect fit for us. And I pray, God, that you make us just that for our children, the perfect fit for them. Let us be diligent. Let us accept the challenge. Let us pour into them. Let us love them, love them with all our hearts. Let us be very diligent in pulling out the bad and that those stuff that is maybe culturally acceptable, but it doesn't line up with your word. And help us, oh God, to pour your word into them, to teach them your word, to instill it into them, not just with our mouths, but with our actions, the way we live before them. Let them catch what we have, not just listen to what we tell them. God, let, us, let this be a church where mothers are respected and lifted up and where mothers are helped and, and facilitated in raising their children and blessed and equipped, oh God, and prayed for and cared for and nurtured themselves, oh God. Just as, as Eunice had her mother Lois to help her raise Timothy. Let us be a church where we help our mothers uh, and, and, and the older we can help the younger and we can help each other and do our part to raise our children to be before you, God. Give us hearts for them. Give us love for them, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you so much for this opportunity to come into your home and to share with you on this Mother's Day. I pray you have the greatest Mother's Day that you ever had. I pray that you take up the challenge and the mantle today to be the greatest mother you've ever been. You that are tremendous and great mothers, which is what everybody that I'm talking to right now, you can even be greater. And there's greatness in those children, and I want you to know it, and sometimes you're not going to see it, but there's greatness in them because God put it in them. He made them in his own image, and we can make them far better than we have ever been. Anyway, God bless you. We love you, and uh, I can't wait to see you. Amen. So nice being with you. Thank you for taking us into your home. I hope you have a wonderful day, a blessed Mother's Day, and uh, it's been good being with you. God bless you all. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. Be blessed. Enjoy this beautiful day. And remember, tonight at 5 o'clock, Kids Spot with Pastor Missy. Oh, see you then. See you then. God bless. God bless. Love you. you.